So why are you here in my car with me? You're wondering. Um, I'll tell you why. Because we are going tonight to go and shoot a Major League Soccer game. Thought it might be fun for you to tag along. The game is going to be the uh, FC Dallas Club, which is uh, the Major League Soccer team for, you guessed it, Dallas, and uh, New York Red and the New York Red Bulls. Should be a terrific game. And uh, what we're going to do here, what the agenda is, is um, we will get up to the stadium. I'm going to uh, do a quick, a what's in my bag type of a scenario. I'm really looking forward to this time we're going to spend together. So you stay put. We'll be right back and uh, we'll dig through my bag a little bit. Hey guys, this is Giovanni. I am outside of the uh, FC Dallas Stadium, the Toyota Stadium here. And uh, to be quite honest, uh, this is the day after the game. Um, my plan originally, as you just saw in the intro video here, was for me to show up and then go on the field and kind of walk you all through some of the process of me getting ready to shoot and also to kind of sit down and do a what's in my bag. Well, I obviously did the shoot at the game, but I did not plan for the fact that number one, um, frankly, I've got the attention span of a squirrel. So whenever I was sitting down and trying to get through my intro and get to the what's in my bag kind of scenario, I kept on getting distracted by stuff. Okay guys, so we're at the stadium now, as you can see, I am, uh, and, um, and actually the team is coming out on the field now. I also got with me a uh, 33 millimeter lens. I'm sorry, not a 33 lens, a 35 millimeter. I don't know what my situation was yesterday, but I just couldn't get in the zone. Um, so that's number one. Number two, um, I realized quickly that obviously at a game like this in a stadium, they're going to be playing all kinds of music on the, the loudspeakers to get the crowd going and get people into the game. Well, I think there might be some copyright issues there. Um, while a lot of the content, the majority of the content that we produce here is uh, news and information, commentary type stuff, I'm not sure that me sitting down and showing you what's in my bag would qualify for that, and I'd rather err on the uh, side of, of, of not getting myself in trouble, not getting the show in trouble, by uh, just saying, you know what, we'll do the what's in my bag later, come in, do my job, get my shot done, get my shoot done, and take care of that. So, with that being the case, um, You've seen a little bit of video of kind of what the atmosphere is, or you're going to see a little bit of video of that. I'm not sure where I'm going to put that in the edit yet. But um, yesterday's shoot was the shoot for uh, FC Dallas, a Major League Soccer game. And this was an interesting one for me because in the past, whenever I shoot pro sports, um, I've always had my Canon 7Ds and obviously a, a, a long lens like my uh, 70 to 200, which I've been using for about five years now. And then I have a few other lenses that I take with me. Well. You know, we're shooting on the Fuji X-T1. They just came out pretty recently with their uh, 50 to 140 uh, lens. It's a 2.8 lens throughout the entire focal range. I don't have that yet. So I was left with shooting this game on uh, the, the Fuji X-T1. And my long reach lens is the 56 millimeter lens. So this kind of uh, created a really interesting situation for me. But I will show you some of the images that I shot with this with uh, this camera. And I was able to successfully crop some to give me a little bit more um, apparent uh, focal range in, in the final images that I used on, on the site for the TV station. So for the shoot here, the, the X-T1 was the main camera I used. And uh, I had with me the, uh, the, the Fuji X100T, um, clearly not a sports camera, uh, but I got some interesting shots and I included those in the portfolio for the TV station. So that, you know, gave me a little bit different look, even though all the settings for the uh, film, film emulation are the same. Um, and it allowed me to, to have the, uh, the 23 millimeter available at all times around my shoulder. When I had the 56 on that camera, I could pick this up and have a wider angle. Uh, to be honest, moving into the future, I've got uh, the rest of the season to shoot with these guys. Plus, I've got a couple of local co 
colleges that I'm going to be shooting sports with. And this camera is just not going to cut it for that kind of stuff. Um, I'll, I'll use it for fashion, for music. Um, but this will probably stay home. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up getting myself a second X-T1 body along with a longer lens. And that's what's going to get me through the season here. Uh, but you'll also see some of the images from this camera as well uh, in the blog post. So... Um, other lenses that I brought with me, um, I did shoot a couple of shots here with uh, the 14 uh, millimeter and with the 35 millimeter lenses. Um, I, I pretty much saved myself from using the 35 too much because I had the, the 23 millimeter on the, the X-T1. The challenge here with those though is that the X-T1 in this situation, low light, lots of fast movement, just really couldn't keep up with the action. Uh, the 35 millimeter and the 14 millimeter, ironically, were much faster for me than the 56 millimeter on the X-T1. So um, when I was shooting, I found that I was a lot more satisfied with the shots I was getting, even though they were wide angle, they weren't tight shots. With these lenses, because they would lock onto focus and stay on focus a lot faster for me, um, I've done some, some fiddling around with the camera to, uh, to, to swish up on, on, on some of the, uh, the way the camera focuses. And so the next sports thing that I do, we're going to see if that's going to help me out. Um, and I would assume that the next time I shoot sports, I should have the 50 to 140 uh, lens. And there's rumors, more than rumors, pretty much confirmed rumors, that there's going to be a, a 90 millimeter prime, which is which I, I'd really rather have. I'd, I'd rather find myself in a situation where I'm shooting with two X-T1s with, say, a 90 that, that I know is on the Fuji roadmap, has, maybe have that 90 on there and maybe a 35 on the other camera and use that to shoot the whole game. And, and, and speaking about those focal lengths, the, the 200's nice to have, especially when you're working on something like a soccer field because the action gets so far away from you. But when I'm shooting like indoor sports, like, um, like, like volleyball or basketball, you don't need that reach typically unless you're gonna get a shot right up in somebody's face. So a 90 millimeter at a basketball game or a volleyball game is gonna be plenty for what I need and even in those situations I found that even with the 56 millimeter lens that sometimes I'm too tight on my subjects and I and I need to physically back up a little bit to get the shot that I want other things in the bag that we're carrying with us and and, and I want to clarify also with these with with the the what's in my bag situation here this is what I shoot everything with this setup <clears throat> I don't particularly have a sports setup versus fashion versus music this is what goes with me everywhere so I've really kind of narrowed down, and I want to show you something that's interesting. I used to walk around with a Low Pro AW300, this huge bag with uh, two camera bodies in it, seven lenses, plus I had a camera a, with a lens on it on the outside, plus all kinds of garbage that I took with me that I just knew that I couldn't possibly survive without. Well, let me show you what I carry around today. This right here is what I carry around with me. This is the Domke Journalist bag. Um, I might have that name wrong. It may not be the journalist, but anyway, um, I'll correct it in the lower thirds or in the blog post if I'm incorrect on that. Um, this, this not only has my two cameras and two additional lenses in it, plus my accessories, it's also carrying a keyboard and my iPad with me. Um, so that, that's a, a quite a big change from what I used to shoot with. And what i am got the, these video cameras set on is a Monfrotto monopad that has feet on the bottom of it that allows it to stand up and you'll see some movement probably in the camera here as I'm talking to you. Well, it's because it's a monopod, it's not a tripod. Next item's in the bag. Uh, the Mophie uh, Power Station XL. This is a battery. Uh, if you compare this to the battery in, a, in an iPhone or an iPad, this will give you eight times the charge out of a standard uh, iPhone or iPad battery. I've got a second one of these that I, that I take with me in case I'm gonna go on a multi-day shoot and, and I don't know what the situation is gonna be with electricity over two or three days. I'll have a couple of these with me. And then for backing up, I've got the, uh, the Western Digital My pa uh, pa Passport wireless hard drive. This, I believe, is a two terabyte. We'll say it's a two terabyte drive. I know it's at least two terabyte. I don't think it's four, uh, but I've got two of these guys with me too. Now, in the game last night, what I would do is I would I would shoot the first half. Now, that you know, for, y for those of y'all not familiar with soccer, what you've got is you've got two 45 minute periods, and the action does not stop. I mean, someone would be injured on the field, and unless it is a a you know broken bone or something, they keep playing. They don't stop unless someone calls a timeout. You know, because you know an official does because someone is injured that badly on the field. You'll see a lot of times in 
soccer guys will get injured, they'll fall down on the field and they'll lay there and roll around for a good two or three minutes before they get themselves back up and get themselves off the field or they continue to play. So it's 45 minutes of nonstop action. Um, so you really can't do anything as far as backing stuff up during that time. But at halftime, what I'll do is I'll pop the SD cards out of my cameras and pop them in here. And this will then automatically, without any intervention on my, on my part at all, will back up those cards onto the hard drive for me so I know that I've got a second copy. I do not delete the stuff off the card. I pop the card off, put it away for safekeeping, pull out a fresh one, and then shoot the second half with both. Um, Again, in the scenario where I'm on a long, you know, a multi-day trip, then I'll have two of these with me and, and that process is duplicated no matter what I'm doing. Usually I'll have an alarm set on the phone and, and uh, say every four hours, every six hours, whatever I decide is appropriate for that shoot, alarm will go off and no matter what I'm doing, I'll pop a card out, stick it in here to back it up. And then I'll pop that card out, put it in the other hard drive and back it up on the other hard drive as well, just to make sure that we're safe. Um, in the back of my bag, I have got my uh, iPad. This is a, a fourth generation iPad, uh, just before they came out with the Airs. Um, and it's got a CDO uh, case on it. This case flips backwards and folds up in the back and creates a, a stand for the iPad. The reason why this is fairly important is that if I am out at an airport, in a hotel, uh, sitting in the middle of a soccer field, and I want to write, I can set this on a flat surface and I pull out my Apple keyboard, my, my Bluetooth keyboard, and I can sit here and type on this. Much, it's much more efficient for me to type on a physical keyboard than to use the keyboard on the screen here. 90% um, of the time, I'm not using a keyboard with the app, iPad. I'm just pulling stuff out. I'm doing you know, graphics editing and stuff like that. So I'll, I'll load my, uh, my pictures up into uh, the iPad itself. The cameras are set to go ahead and automatically name the files in a, in a convention that I wanted to be named in, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, but then I do my editing, which is all graphical work. I don't need a keyboard in those situations. And then we upload directly from the iPad. A um, couple of other items that I have in here that are uh, interesting. I'm gonna look at you here. These are interesting items. We'll pull them out a few at a time and just drop them in my car as I get rid of them. Number one, um, I carry around with me um, so Alltech Lensing Sports headphones. Um, I like these better than the Apple headphones. And uh, typically, uh, whenever I'm out shooting, whether it's a game like this or whether it's a you know fashion show, typically music, I'm going to pay attention to what's going on on stage and I'm going to listen to the music as I'm shooting it. Other stuff, usually I put music on in my headphones so I can kind of kind of get inside myself and, and kind of get more creative. Music helps me do that, so the Alltech Lansings are, are pretty important. Um, five hour energy, just in case you need it on a long day shoot. Um, aspirin and antacid, A, you never know what you're eating, when you're gonna eat, antacid goes a long way. And typically with the aspirin, if I'm out on, on a soccer field like this and I'm running up and down the field, up and down stairs, I'll take an aspirin right when the game is over, right before I leave to minimize the amount of pain I feel the next day. I think that's more of an old man thing than anything else. Blistex, the board to keep the lips taken care of. They'll get dry before you know it. Charger for the iPad, a display port from the th a, a, a VGA to, th to lightning bolt uh, display port for when I do presentations. And uh, then my SD card reader, lightning to SD card reader. Pretty cool. Again, very minimal stuff. I mean, this is stuff that I only need uh, in, in very, 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 you know, this is the stuff that I cannot live without. And I've got it all into the small bag again. This is a USB to Thunderbolt reader. Uh, allows me to plug my camera into my phone if I want to uh, transfer files directly to my phone and edit that way. Um, other side of my bag here, stuff that matters. Um, SD cards. I've got a stupid amount of SD cards with me. I probably got, you know, holy cow, probably two and a half, three terabytes worth of SD cards there and 32 and 64 gig in increments. A Band-Aid, one Band-Aid can make a day uh, that could be terrible if you get a blister and make it tolerable. Flashlight, a multi-tool, pencil, stylus, I've had this stylus for three years. I think I've used it twice. And an extra set of keys. I cannot tell you how many times I've locked my keys in the car 
when I'm on a shoot. So I've learned to carry an extra set of keys with me in my bag so keys are always with me. And there's a passport in there too. That probably needs to be renewed now that I think about it. Um, that's it, man. That's the bag. I've got, I've got a side bag over here, which I will open up here. I've got a couple of pouches on my side bag. This, this guy right here holds my uh, US or my um, Sennheiser wireless microphone setup that I'm using here to shoot this with. And then this bag has just a, a multitude of various USB, micro USB type of uh, cables in it um, for miscellaneous stuff, chargers, whatnot. So uh, that's the bag. And again, this, this is the setup that I've kind of uh, evolved into after shooting now. Holy cow, I am so ridiculously old for about, you know, amateur for about 25 years, pro for about 10. Um, and I've gone through all the kind of, uh, you know, the, the getting more gear than I need or gear that I think that I can't live without. And uh, it's nice to kind of evolve into a place where you can move from having, you know, these gargantuan cameras with gargantuan lenses on them and you can stop and really evaluate what your actual needs are and, and work in, a, in, in a, a mode that allows you to minimize your footprint. So A, it becomes you know, more efficient for you. I, I, can, I can be so much more effective on the field running around with a small setup like this than back in the day when I carried that huge backpack, all those lenses, all the tripods. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost funny to think about how much time I spent sitting on the ground switching gear out as opposed to just walking in the gate, cameras in my hand with a small bag around my shoulder and walking into the gate and event and being ready to shoot right off the bat. It's, it's, it's a whole different world. So I, I would encourage anyone who's watching to uh, resist the temptation um, of being addicted to, to equipment and try to focus on limiting what you use. It'll help you develop a style. If you say pick one or two cameras, and I would pick the exact same camera body, bodies, and you know, start off with two lenses at, at first. I would say if you start with two at first, and then move into maybe if you are out on a shoot and there's something that you desperately need that you don't have a lens for, then consider getting the next one. And that's where I'm at right now. I'm at a point where I will probably never bring the X100T, certainly to a sporting event anymore. I'll move to just two of the identical bodies and probably three lenses. I'll get the e e either the 50 to, to, to 140 or I'll just get that 90 prime. And then I've got my wide angle, which is a 14 or a 35, but I saw which one I want to use that. And then the 56 millimeter, you, you can't live without if you're a Fuji uh, shooter. I mean, this is this is the cream of the crop and the lenses in the, in the, Suji, in the Fuji line. So anyhow, that's what's in my bag. Look, uh, take a look at some of the photos I, I shot at the game here. Um, and uh, what am I going to do next time? I have no earthly idea what I'm going to do for the next video. I'll figure that out later. Thanks for watching. And um, close. Close scene.